In this case, something I have been waiting a couple of years for, very excited to show off the Strebog from Grand Power. Coming up next on GB Guns. Welcome back to those of you that have been with us for a while. You know that Grand Power is one of my all-time favorite manufacturers. They do an excellent job with their pistols, have the unique rotating barrel, incredible triggers. Go watch those videos. I might as well make a Grand Power playlist by now. I've covered so much of their stuff. The Strebog, which by the way is Slovakian God of Storms, if I'm not mistaken, which is a very cool name for a little sub gun. Is a very interesting piece, uh, first of its kind from Grand Power to my knowledge. They've always been a handgun manufacturer. This is a sub gun for military and police use. The, of course, example I have is semi-auto only. Um, they make a rifle and they make this shorter version for us here in the States. Of course, a pistol with the block off plate available from Eagle Imports is this adapter to be able to throw, guess what? Your standard AR pistol brace. Uh, I plan on using this uh, tail hook brace and uh, a matador folding adapter since there's no buffer on the back side. You don't have to worry about any buffer spring or anything like that to make this a little neat little folder uh, home defense type weapon. Anyways, let's uh, before I get too much into the gun, go over what comes in it. You get the manual and as you can see, this is the uh, rifle setup with the stock on it. In fact, that looks like an SBR. It's all in English, so no worries about that. The disassembly is a little different uh, as most Grand Power things, but you do have these nice color photos that show you how to do it. Unfortunately, the color photos are for the version with the stock. Slightly different here, but not a whole lot. I also wanted to point out the warranty card, which of course comes in five languages. Two years on plastic parts, five years for other parts, meaning anything aluminum, uh, steel, which is an excellent, excellent warranty for an imported gun. So no worries there about what's going to happen a few years from now when stuff starts acting funny. It comes with two 20 round magazines. These are nice translucent magazines with very clear you get the camera on them with the lighting markings for how many rounds are in there. Also available from Eagle Imports is a 30 rounder, which of course is going to be my preferred go-to. Let me get the case out of the way and let's take a look at this thing. So as always, we'll start off by showing clear. There you go. You can see the chamber's empty. And nice large laser etched on the, the bolt here is caution reciprocating handle. It is left side charging, which makes the most sense. That allows you to keep your right hand ready for action as you charge on the left, like the MP5 and a lot of other smart sub guns. But it's a reciprocating handle, which means when you hold it, you don't want to hold like this or like this or like that. So you see clamp warriors, I'm sorry, uh, that's either going to jam the gun or hurt or both. You're going to have to do a classic AK hold on the magwell, thumb forward, or if you SBR this, then you can put a forward vertical grip which is probably what was intended as it was designed. So starting off, we'll look around the front. You see very clean aluminum machining. Also notice that the muzzle is threaded. I plan on throwing my can on there and running some subsonics because this is not just a standard blowback, which I'm uh, excited to explore some more. We've got plenty of rail space up here. You can put a hand stop, which I'd probably recommend. But remember, no vertical grips on a pistol unless it's a short barreled rifle. So here's our charging handle, nice and large. You notice the sight there, the flip up front sight. There's also a smaller sight already on there. So if you look down, see the front sight there and rear sight, you've got that option as a sight picture, or these can flip up and you've got a peep sight with a nice large white dot up there. Sorry about that angle there, but uh, this is a little bit larger than your standard handgun for fitting in my camera frame. We have some texturing on the polymer lower, which is obviously good for grip and quite a bit 
of Magwell Flare. In fact, I was playing with this earlier, and I'll have to show this in the range review if I can recall when I do it, but the, uh, the flare is so wide that you can lazily start well off alignment and end up inserting the mag. Just to prove to you that I'm not trying to coordinate this, because I film these things by looking through the camera, so I'm not even seeing it right on it. But that, that flare is gonna make for easy, quick reloads. And as with uh, all grand powers, we've got ambi controls, so our safety is on this side, as well as mag release, which ejects properly, kicks it out there. And we've got safety and mag release on the right side. The grip is part of the lower receiver, much like the MP5. A little slimming here and interesting texturing. We've got a flat back, which of course will be replaced with the adapter before I hit the range. Coming around to the other side, there's our controls again. You might notice as with um, most European pieces, and since Graham Power has expert gunsmiths that put everything together and uh, mark them with their name, the trigger group, the lower receiver, the bolt, and the barrel have all been stamped with the same serial number. This gun was assembled as you see here. It wasn't from a pile of parts that were just mashed together. So that's a, an interesting, cool bit. Eight inch barrel, I know I don't normally do specs, but I wanted to point out the eight inch barrel for a very important reason. Those of you that are students of muzzle energy and velocity on different rounds know that eight inches is about ideal for nine millimeter. So eight and a half, between eight and nine is usually where most nine mil rounds peter out. So anything longer than that, you actually start to lose a little bit of velocity sometimes just from the friction of the bullet traveling in the bore, which makes eight to nine inches the ideal length to get the most energy out of nine mil before it starts slowing down. That will put the muzzle energy out of this guy higher than, of course, any nine millimeter handgun, and even higher than some 45s. If you don't believe me, go play with the math, and you'll see that uh, this is ideal. That's why the MP5 is an eight and a half inch. Let's field strip this thing and take a look so inside. field stripping this guy, at least mine, because it's brand new and super tight, does require a punch and hammer. You've got to drive out this rear pin. You're not driving it all the way out, of course, just taking it a good part of the way. Excuse me while I go off camera a bit. It has a retainer in it that clicks. May or may not have heard it there. Very much, uh, well, it's a very smart thing so that these pins are not lost in the field. Then you can pivot the lower away from the upper. I didn't get the pin all the way out. <laughs> Gotta drive a little farther. As always, I show you guys my errors when I make them. There we go. That was the click of the pin coming all the way out. Now, the upper and lower pivot freely. We don't, uh, don't separate the upper from the lower. This pin here is trapped. Interesting bit here. I do want to, uh, forgot to mention, this does have last round bolt hold open. So for all of you who love the MP5, except for its uh, fatal flaw with the magazine, Bolt hold open, this gun does have it. So we take a look inside here. See so we've got steel chassis for the trigger mechanism and everything to fit in, which is very classic Grand Power. They've been doing that since before it was cool. We now need to slide this rear plate off, which comes down. It's very snug on this gun. So I'm gonna give it a gentle whack with the rubber end of the mallet get it started. A couple more times. There we go. So this is popped out. Here's your end plate. And now by grabbing the bolt handle, we can bring the bolt back. It catches a little bit. Got to kind of 
wiggle to find the sweet spot and it will come out. As with all other ground powers, the machining on this thing is impeccable and very tight. And so you don't have those loose tolerances that make things necessarily easy to, uh, to work with all the time. I'll show you how I got it clear as I just pushed up on this back end a little bit. And now the bolt comes to the rear and stops with that pin holding it there. That pin can now come out and is reversible, can go from other side. Notice it's well lubed and has its own bearing. And our bolt can come out. So to give you a look inside this thing, you can see it's all very tightly, very finely machined. I mean, about as exact of alumin, aluminum forming as you get. So here is our bolt and it's got these, not only the spring here to return it and also absorb some of the recoil, but we've got rubber pads on both ends. So that helps soften the blow uh, while keeping the weight of this thing where it should be to be reliable on nine millimeter. So we've got rubber on the back end of the plate and rubber between the bolt and this plate. Very interesting design, very nicely made. I mean, look at that. This thing is flawless. I am curious if these tight tolerances that are signature ground power are also going to add to some reliability concerns. Not that the gun would be unreliable so much as that the gun wouldn't like to run dirty, which uh, I know I'm guilty of, as are a lot of, uh, a lot of other American shooters. It's all right, it happens. Close that back up. This plate needs to go on the end there. I think I'm gonna replace it with this stock adapter so I can get the stock on this thing now. If you missed it when I mentioned earlier, this stock adapter is available separately through Grand Power, through Eagle Imports. It's made by Grand Power. So we'll slide this guy in, side up. Also very nicely made. Interesting castle nut concept here. See, it must go like that. Not quite. Yeah. Anyways, I'll figure this out. <laughs> it's got to be obviously this way. So you've got your your three keys up top and then the one in the bottom to sit in that part of the buffer. So this went in kind of at an angle and slides up. You're witnessing me experiment with this for the very first time. So if it's not super perfect and smooth, that's because it's my first time ever putting this together. There you go. Fit in maybe another little tap to get that to line up. I'll drive the pin in off screen so you guys don't have to listen to Ben. We're back, got that on there and in fact together. It's just a very, very snug fit. Uh, precisely machined piece like all ground power. If you were curious about the trigger, since I didn't mention that earlier, we've got ribs on the trigger for texturing. A little bit of take up, comes to a wall, breaks. Very little travel. Very short reset and breaks again. The trigger is, I'd say probably the six, seven pound mark, a little heavy. But being that short, this is going to be a very quick shooter. I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. I'm going to get it out to the range as soon as I can and see you there. We'll of course do our full mag plus one, which will be a lot of fun with a 30 rounder. I'll uh, throw my can on it. If uh, my adapter fits, I believe the threading should be standard 9mm threading. And then we'll do the what's for dinner test and some let's say 25 yard accuracy using the iron sights that are on here. That'll be coming soon. Thanks for watching.